And this is our scene for our freehand interior drawing. It is a fairly complex looking scene, but the biggest difference between doing an interior perspective drawing and an exterior perspective drawing is actually in our head. All the principles are the same. We find eye level, which is rather obviously across here. And then the higher above eye level we go, the steeper the perspective angles get. Because of the lens distortion here, we have a vertical perspective. And if this photo is uncropped, then the vertical line is going to be here in the center. And that looks pretty much like it. And as we go to the right, the lines increase in angle slightly. And as we go to the left, away from that vertical line, the lines also increase slightly. Here's our interior scene, which I'm about to start for the second time, because not long into my first attempt at drawing this interior scene freehand, I realized I'd chosen a starting point that was going to give me a problem when I reached a certain point. And then I reached that certain point and I had the problem. If you're interested to see how my drawings look when they don't go right, I'll show you at the end and I'll explain how I chose to start that drawing and why it didn't work for me. So with that wisdom though, for right now, I'm actually going to start with drawing this section here, probably this section and this section and come down and to particularly work at getting some of these perspective lines and proportions of these shapes as accurate as I can. There's quite a number of patterns because of the design of the interior and because of the perspective that need to work in together. And that's going to be the tricky thing, to keep the proportions accurate enough so that my drawing looks a credible representation of this room from this angle. And I think I'm going to start from this corner. Let's give it a go. And remember at the end, I'll show you what didn't work the first time. So I just have a pause here. This is just over 20 minutes of drawing. Uh, these things are always a bit slower at the start. Just because we're using a pen and we can't erase any of our lines doesn't mean we can't do some lines where we're really drafting the shape and working things out. It works particularly well for a subject such as this where there will be so much detail and so many lines at the end that faint lines that we've used to help position the major elements, the major perspective angles of the drawing aren't going to be a problem. What am I thinking about at the moment? Well, I haven't foreshortened this end bit as well as I could have. I don't know whether I can 
fiddle with that a little bit to make it a bit better or whether that will just bring more attention to it. And clearly I haven't quite got these two chandeliers positioned correctly or more likely probably just drawn a bit large because they're actually overlapping and they're not here. But that's not the sort of detail that's going to be a problem at the end if the rest of the drawing is in line. So I'm going to work at doing a bit more of this detail here. And looking back at our reference, I'm thinking I'm not going to put these two tables in, but instead I'm going to maybe put some people here and I'll probably turn this person around and maybe draw this person a lot closer because I don't really want people close up looking at the viewer because I don't want to compete with the room. I'd rather keep the Vienna Opera patrons a little more as just accessories to the grandeur of the room, giving scale and a sense of its purpose. So let's now continue with our drawing. So this is about 25 minutes later, and what am I thinking? I've, I've kind of stretched it a bit this way, but that's okay because that exaggerates the perspective which is in my drawing, which almost makes it more dramatic. As long as I keep the perspective proportions accurate for what I've drawn, of course, no one's going to be comparing it with this, except me and all of you. One of the reasons I'm wanting to do this is because I'm dreaming of being able to book a flight to Europe and to do some location sketching and drawing freehand from a photo reference. While it's not the same as drawing on location, particularly for an interior scene, it does give practice to many of the demands of location drawing. And as you can see, I am drawing this larger than my reference, which I can't say was super intentional, but that's fine. I'll go with it. Another important consideration is when we get a section such as here, here, is not to overthink it. We're really capturing the effect, not the detail. This is where drawing all those trees is great practice, where we can't possibly draw the leaves, and we're trying just to capture the effect of those leaves. The actual architecture here is so complex. We're just wanting to make sure we capture some of the more obvious lines and shadows, and all of those things will give the brain enough clues to go, oh, this is a doorway. Oh, here's one of the sculptures. Oh, this is a bit of scroll work. And we don't have to connect everything up together. I think at this point, I'm going to finish this roof section and then we'll have the, in my mind now, the challenge of doing the foreground. I've probably drawn these lines just down a little bit too far, but I can hopefully space figures so that they come in between the lines. So I can make them dark enough to cover the lines. There is this nice bronze bust here, which I have been aware the whole drawing will cover up any lines that have gone too far here. So let's start again.
Okay, here's another 20 minutes gone. So that means I spent just over an hour to get it to this stage. You'll notice I've left these areas blank. There is some very light and beautiful filigree type design work there. What I think I'm going to do is switch to a lighter pen because I, I do want to suggest something of those decorations, but I don't want them to compete with the line work I've already done. Creating these spaces helps the detail to breathe and let's just see the overall structure of the space. So what I need to do now is move downwards and do this section. It's actually the part I've been least looking forward to but I'm going to start by drawing a few figures further away because that will help me get a sense of figures and scale and then I'll see what I can do. I've drawn these lines down a bit far but I'm hoping I can kind of cover those by careful placing of the figures. We'll move on and give this a go now. So that's another 15 minutes gone and I've pretty much finished this lower scene. Actually, I might just do a little bit of maybe some horizontal cross hatching here just to suggest the floor a little bit and to anchor it more. I'm happy with having left these two out because I don't want to visually anchor the scene too much down here because it really is this perspective view going up the walls and along the ceiling which is the visual emphasis in this scene. So I've drawn this with a 0.3 millimeter pen. I'm going to switch now to a 0.1 millimeter pen to do a suggestion of this detail here. Now I'm going to start drawing the closest detail first because I need to draw that with a little more detail and emphasis and care and accuracy than the detail as we go further back. So if I establish my line work, for these closest parts, then I'll have a sense of how much I need to reduce the detail and the precision as I go back. But I don't think precision is really the right word to use. So let me do this. I'll finish this floor section. We'll have a look at it. And then if you wanna hang around for another few minutes, I'll show you the first go I had of this scene, explain what went wrong and why I felt I needed to restart it and what I learned in the process. That's why it's important not to be alarmed or upset when we make mistakes because I learned something very valuable. I sort of already knew it, but it just reinforced now the importance of actually following some of the things I know when I draw. Let's go. So here's our finished scene. What are my thoughts? Well, I didn't really intend to draw it this much larger than my reference. I realized early on that I had increased the distortion of the perspective angle, but I was happy with that because in a sense, it creates even more visual drama with that final detail by doing these closest areas first and draw very little further back here. If I'd started here, I know I would have been tempted to try and do too much of this detail. 
So what was the mistake I made? This was my first take. I was starting with the chandeliers. And when I began to draw the building behind it, I realized that it was going to be tricky to line up this chandelier's cable with the decoration in the ceiling that it had to come out of. A significant part of the overall scene, I thought that I really needed to start again because there was no way I could somehow take this up, put this section here and have it still make sense with the scale I developed. I realized clearly what I needed to do is to establish the ceiling and these two circular decorative elements and then bring the chandeliers down from there. And I think that worked much better for me. There were a few other things with the proportions, but on their own, I would have pushed through with them. Sometimes it's important to push through and at other times we need to think, I've learned something here and now I need to start again with what I've learned. We all learn all the time. No one has some automatic ability for everything to work out. But the more practice we have, the less this happens. And when this does happen, it might be a frustration, but it's not a discouragement because we actually use it as our own lesson. The other thing I would like to draw attention to though, are these painted panels in the ceiling. They're very common in these beautiful grand interiors. The problem is because we can be tempted to try and draw the picture as a little picture, instead of trying to draw the effect of the picture. These are, in the end, a decorative element and we don't want them to overwhelm or draw attention, particularly because we haven't drawn the figures very well and they look lumpy or whatever. And the figures that we do draw need to actually conform to the perspective angles that the frames that the pictures are in sit in. And you can see here the way I've tried to suggest it. I've tried to draw a few shapes that could possibly, if you half shut your eyes, suggest arms or legs or heads or wings. I've also tried to suggest the light and dark areas because really that's what you see when you glance at these. You get a sense of there are light and dark areas and there's arms and legs and heads everywhere. You don't really work out who's where and what are they doing. So that's the effect, not the exactness, but that's the effect I'm trying to capture. And so I used hatching to represent some of the darker areas. So I used hatching to indicate some of the darker local colors. I also used a lighter hatching evenly then over the whole drawing just to indicate this is a painting and visually and color wise and tonally wise, it's a separate thing to this or this or this. Personally, I think that works. I didn't get the foreshortening correct here and that's the most annoying thing for me. And it's no coincidence that this was actually the first thing I drew because it is always hardest to get our proportions correct at the very start of a drawing. We haven't warmed up, we've got nothing to go off. And if I were to start this again a third time, I'm sure I would get this spot on. I hope you found this fun. It brought back wonderful memories of an amazing night at the Vienna Opera. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. If you haven't subscribed, why not? And why not have a go at drawing an interior perspective space? It's just the same as drawing a structure from the exterior, but turned inside out. All the principles are the same. Don't let the unfamiliarity of it make it feel somehow harder than it really is. I'll see you next time. Bye.